In this video we're going to see how we can use uh, Keras to build a neural network, train that neural network, and then um, use that neural network to classify data. Uh, we're going to use the same activity recognition data set that we used uh, previously, and we're going to read it in the same way. So first we import pandas. And then we want to read in the data. So we need the uh, train data first. And again, let's just uh, see uh, quickly what this uh, looks like. So again, we have uh, 563 columns here. They're all uh, normalized, so their values are all between um, uh, minus one and one, and centered center around zero. Um, we have this uh, column subject that we want to drop, and this uh, activity column that uh, contains the label. Uh, the remaining uh, 561 columns are the features that we want to use for classification. So let's just uh, do that. So let's split this uh, data set into uh, X, which will contain our features. Uh, so that's just going to contain the first uh, 561 columns. And then we want to set the Y, that's just going to be our uh, activity uh, column, uh, which contains the um, labels. So now that we have the data, we can uh, start uh, using uh, Keras. So as we said, uh, Keras needs a backend to run. In this case, we're going to use uh, TensorFlow as a uh, backend. So we first, we first need to import that. We import TensorFlow. Then uh, we're, going, we're also going to import uh, NumPy. Uh, so um, NumPy is going to be useful as uh, uh, as a module that has some helper functions to uh, help us work uh, better with uh, arrays uh, uh, with number arrays, and it has some helpful functions that uh, we're going to use. Uh, then we want to import Keras, so we use the uh, from TensorFlow import Keras, and then. We want to uh, import uh, the layers that we're going to use. Uh, so one way to do this is to just import. Uh, so we'll go from TensorFlow. Here, so we want to import layers. Another option would be to have from TensorFlow Keras layers to just uh, import uh, directly the layers that we want to use. In this case. Uh, for example, uh, the, a dense layer, which is a full, fully connected layer, like the ones we had in scikit-learn. But we're just going to use uh, this notation. So this just changes how much we have to type when we want to use a certain layer. Uh, everything that's uh, in TensorFlow uh, Keras, uh, that uh, can be um, imported like this, uh, would need to be um, not called using this... Um, name and uh, if we input uh, classes directly then uh, for, for example classes directly then we could just uh, use that uh, class so okay let's just uh, import everything and then um, we can start building the model so one thing that uh, we need to do when building the model is specify the shape of the uh, input so let's look at the shape uh, of X, that's uh, uh, the shape that we're going to... So this is going to be the input to the neural network. The Y that we, use, uh, for that we also use for training is the output of the layer, is the output of the, um, of the neural network, and we'll, we'll only be interested in uh, its shape when we're defining the uh, last or output layer, uh, while we need the X for the first or the input layer. So if we look at the shape of X, uh, we see we have uh, 7,352 rows and 561 columns. So uh, now let's define the model. 
so we, as we said, we're going to use a sequential model. So this is a class in Keras that we can access uh, using Keras sequential. Um, and then we want to have um, uh, we want to have multiple uh, uh, layers in this uh, uh, in this uh, sequential model. Uh, we could do it like we saw previously, so just by defining a sequential model and then a uh, adding the layers, or we could just uh, uh, directly create a sequential model and pass the layers as a list. So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, so in the first layer, we want to use um, so the first hidden layer. Uh, we want to be uh, to make this a dense layer. In this case, and let's say we're going to use nine units. Uh, and we have to define the activation function. Uh, let's make it uh, the rectified linear unit uh, function. And then we also have to specify the input shape. So this is what why we looked at the shape of X. Uh, that's what we're going to use here. So we want to tell Keras that the uh, that its input is going to have uh, 561 uh, columns, now, or we want to have 561 neurons in the input layer. Uh, so we just need to uh, specify the number of columns. And then we can uh, go on and define the next layer. Um, so one thing that we can do in uh, Keras is to uh, have uh, some dropout uh, or randomly delete a certain uh, part of the uh, inputs that we uh, have in the previous layer. Um, Uh, the reason we do this is to prevent overfitting. So overfitting happens when the accuracy of uh, classification on the training set is very high. Uh, however, that doesn't generalize well. So if we uh, try to uh, check whether this, uh, so we want to use this uh, neural network uh, to predict something, it won't, uh, um, it won't be able to make very good predictions. Or if we use a test set to, and try to if you use a test set and uh, try to evaluate the network on that, we would get uh, a lower uh, accuracy. So that's why we're going to use a dropout layer here. Of course, a dropout isn't always uh, necessary and it's, it isn't uh, always um, suited to every problem. But let's try to build a neural network using a dropout layer. Uh, we're going to uh, drop or set to zero 30% um, uh, of these uh, units, and we're going to keep using the remaining 70%. And then we want another dense layer. Now this one is also going to have nine units, and we can define a different activation function, but we're still going to use uh, the rel function for this uh, um, layer here as well. And then we want uh, to have uh, uh, to define the output layer. Um, right, we're going to define an output layer. Now uh, the output layer should have uh, as many outputs as we have classes. Uh, we didn't look at it uh, in detail during this course, but this um, uh, this. Uh, um, this dataset has uh, six uh, activity labels, so it's not just standing and walking upstairs, but there's also um, there's also laying, sitting, uh, walking, uh, and walking downstairs. So those are the classes. Uh, we have a total of, of six classes, so we want to use um, a six uh, output uh, uh, units, or we want to have six uh, neurons in the output layer. The activation function that we're going to use here is uh, softmax. Uh, softmax is a generali generalization of the sigmoid function, and we use it uh, in output in, in output layers uh, when we have a multi-class uh, classification problem. So if we have more than two uh, classes uh, as labels, or want to uh, sort our data into more than uh, two classes, then we use a softmax uh, activation function, and the number of units should be equal to the number of uh, classes we have. Um, 
right? We can define that model. And now let's look at a summary of the model. So we can uh, see um, what we have here. So we have a list of all of our uh, layers, then um, the output uh, ships for each uh, layer, the number of parameters in each layer, and then we can see how many total parameters we have and how many of them are uh, trainable. Um, Right, so uh, now that we have this, let's um, uh, compile the model. That's the next step in building a model in Keras, is, uh, after we've defined it, is to compile it. Um, so we compile. Uh, when we do this, we can specify uh, the optimizer. In this case, we're going to use the Adam optimizer. Um, the optimizers are in the Keras optimizers model, module. So we use an uh, Adam optimizer and we can specify the learning rate here. So we can use the default or we can specify our own. Let's set the learning rate to 0.001. Then we define the loss function that we want to use. And when we have a multi-class classification problem, like uh, uh, here, uh, we use uh, categorical, categorical cross-entropy for the uh, loss function. And finally, we can define the metrics that we want to evaluate this uh, neural network on. The metrics are in the uh, Keras metrics module. So we're going to use uh, accuracy. Uh, then we're also going to use um, uh, we're also going to use um, uh, another metric, which is called categorical accuracy. And we're going to uh, see uh, why we uh, use this metric and, and, and why accuracy won't be suitable later. And then we also want to use precision and recall. Um, now, one downside of Keras is that it doesn't offer uh, an, a DF1 score as a metric uh, directly, so we, uh, we have to either implement it on our own or use it from another module, uh, for example, from uh, scikit-learn. So now we've uh, compiled the model and now we can try to train it. So in order to train a model on Keras, we uh, again use a fit function. And we say uh, what we want to train it on, so we pass in the uh, training x and training y. Then we say how many epochs we want to train for. Um, let's say, for example, we want to have 500 epochs. And then uh, we also determine the batch size. Uh, so Keras processes uh, the training set in batches. Uh, or in groups, and we want, we want to determine how large we want uh, each of these groups to be. Uh, here, let's use a batch size of uh, 100 um, samples. And let's uh, set the verbose to 1 so that we can see what the training uh, process uh, looks like. So we run this, and we immediately get an error. Uh, this error tells us that uh, the shapes of the uh, of the um, output, uh, so the shape of a Y, which only has uh, one column, is not compatible with the uh, six uh, output neurons that we have. So if we look at Y, we can see that we just have one column with uh, some values. The problem here uh, is that, um, so we can't uh, do this if we have uh, uh, six uh, output neurons, we also want uh, Y to have the same shape or to have six uh, outputs um, or to have six uh, columns. 
uh, specifically. Uh, so now let's uh, see what will happen if we use the same model, but we set the so we use the same model, but we want to set the number of uh, units in the uh, output layer to one. We're going to compile it the same way. Uh, and we're going to use the same um, training steps, so for the same training setup. Again, we want to use X and Y uh, for train for, for 500 epochs, uh, uh, batch them in uh, groups of uh, 100 and uh, see the uh, training process. Uh, now when we try this, we get another error, so it's not the same one as uh, before. This error tells us that we can't uh, cast uh, a string to a float. So now the problem that we have here is that these Y's here are strings, but uh, uh, this neural network can only work with um, numbers. So uh, we need to do something to turn this um, uh, categorical label uh, into numbers. Uh, the way that we're uh, going to do this is uh, we're going to um, uh, one hot encode this y. That means that we want to have um, uh, to have uh, so to represent uh, each of these uh, labels as a, a list of uh, six values, uh, and each of those uh, so each uh, element in that list will uh, will correspond to one uh, class or one label, and then. Yeah, the, uh, so uh, if the index of uh, the corresponding label is one, that means that we're uh, that this uh, that the given sample at the same index in the in X has the label that corresponds to that uh, index. Now the way the neural network uh, works uh, with uh, six outputs is actually uh, the same. So uh, the neural network will, uh, will have six outputs. And each of those outputs will correspond to one um, to one um, uh, to one uh, class. And um, if the output of uh, the uh, uh, corresponding class is one, that means that we're predicting uh, that uh, class whose output uh, is one. The other outputs will all be zero. Um, so the first thing that uh, we wanted to do is uh, one hot encode uh, y. So the encoded y, uh, we can do this uh, easily using pandas. So we can just use pandas to one hot encode y. And then let's see what uh, the encoded y will look like. So we can see here we have the classes. And um, again, uh, so this first sample, for example, has the class standing. And then we see that's this uh, sample here. So this sample has the class ending, so it has one in the standing column. All uh, the rest are zero. Um, then this uh, last few samples belong to the walking upstairs class, as we can see here as well. And those have ones in the walking upstairs column. Um, now that we have this, we can build the uh, neural network that we want. Uh, so, um, Let's uh, try this again. Uh, again, we want to have six uh, units in the uh, output uh, layer. As I said earlier, we want to use the same uh, optimizer loss and metrics. And now when we train the network, instead of uh, using Y, we want to use the encoded version of Y. So let's run this and let's see how the uh, network uh, uh, improves its uh, training, uh, uh, improves during training. So we can see here uh, in the first step we have uh, some loss here, um, some low accuracy and precision and um, recall are zero. But as we uh, train uh, more, we can see here, for example, in the 13th epoch, epoch we already have a training uh, categorical accuracy of 77%. And this uh, improves uh, with each step. So if we get to the bottom of this, 
So in the last epoch, we have a training uh, categorical accuracy of 0 0.94, uh, and the precision and recall are also fairly high. Uh, we can see that the accuracy here is uh, low, uh, and we're, we're going to see why that is. Um, so now we have the uh, model that we trained. Um, now let's uh, um, let's uh, evaluate it on uh, our test on the on our on our test set. So this uh, just uh, gives us the uh, so uh, the accuracy that we have uh, here re uh, refers to the training set, but we want to see how well this network uh, generalizes. Uh, so um, we want to read in the test data. About the same way as previously. Um, we split it into X and Y. And Y test is also just the, address, the activity column. Um, now, since we encoded y, uh, uh, the training y, uh, we have to encode the uh, test y the same way. Um, so we uh, have to uh, encode it again the same way of y test. So we do this, and now if we look at y. Uh, so the encoded version of white test, we see that we have the uh, same counts uh, in the same order. This, the, uh, this is important to have them in the same um, order. And um, <coughs> we can see again, uh, we have this uh, one hot encoded, uh, encoding that we want. So now to evaluate the model, we're going to use the evaluate method. Um, we do it on take, uh, x test and y test. Uh, we have to use the encoded version. And again, we say that we want to, the batch to have a, a size of uh, 100. Uh, so now let's run this and see what we get. So here for the accuracy, uh, we got some uh, low value of uh, about 11.74%. Uh, uh, however, the categorical accuracy, uh, precision and recall are all uh, fairly high uh, or above 93%. Uh, so the first thing that we want to look at is why is the accuracy so low? Uh, the thing that uh, um, so uh, what the, uh, the accuracy does uh, as a metric in Keras is it uh, compares the output that we get to the output in the uh, in the test set, and uh, it compares them uh, and it checks whether they're equal. So now let's uh, see what uh, this um, uh, looks like, um, so, or let's see what the predictions of this uh, network look like. We're going to define uh, y pred. This is just going to be. Uh, we're going to see what the model predicts for this uh, x test and we want to see what this y red looks like so here uh, we see we have some array of uh, arrays so um, uh, here we have some low value for the first uh, class uh, some higher value for the second class now then so for sitting, then for standing, we have some uh, value that's uh, lower than this. Um, and then we have some very small values for the options of uh, walking, walking downstairs and walking upstairs. Um, so the correct uh, class here is standing, but what this network predicts is um, this, uh, is uh, sitting. Uh, in the second case, uh, the network predicts uh, uh, standing, which is correct. So the prediction of the network is the 
uh, output here that has the higher the highest value or the highest probability um, so in the first case here the ne network predicts that uh, this um, uh, so it, there is about 70% uh, chance that uh, the class is sitting and 24% uh, that the class is uh, standing in the second case the, net the, the network predicts that the um, that the class is, uh, st um, is standing with 98% certainty. Um, so let's see now what... Uh, um, so we can see here what our uh, Y test uh, looks like. So this is here. Um, so uh, our Y test, uh, if we uh, represent it in the same form, so we just convert it to, NumPy, uh, to a NumPy array. Um, Uh, we can see that it looks like this. So it's just 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Uh, so it just has zeros and ones. Well, here we have uh, many different uh, probabilities. So in some cases, uh, the network will predict something with 100% uh, accuracy. Um, and in that case, uh, we're going to get uh, a match and this will increase the accuracy. So if we had... Uh, um, so uh, why uh, pred would have to look some uh, exactly like this in order to uh, get uh, another uh, point for accuracy or to consider the two uh, data points the same. Uh, so uh, in il about 11.74% 11 uh, 11 of the cases, we get a prediction that looks like this. So just 0010000. zero, zero, one, zero, 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 zero. Um, in all other cases, we get predictions that uh, look like this. However, this isn't an issue. As we can see that the categorical accuracy, that means uh, whether the, co the, the correct class was predicted, uh, is um, uh, fairly high. Uh, so we know that the uh, correct class was predicted when uh, that is the class that has the highest uh, probability in out of this uh, list. Uh, one way we can uh, cross-check this uh, categorical accuracy and see what um, <coughs> and see what it actually does uh, is uh, to do the following. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, um, look at which class is predicted uh, every time in this uh, y um, so in this uh, set of the uh, predictions. So we're going to use NumPy for this. Uh, we want to find the <coughs> output here. So uh, for each of these lists, we want to find the index that has the highest uh, value or the highest uh, probability. Um, so we use y thread and we say we want to look at the. Uh, so we want to look at uh, each of these uh, sublists. If we look at this now. Uh, we can see what we get. So the first um, a sample is predicted to belong to the class within, with index 1 that's sitting. Uh, the second and the third samples are predicted to be uh, to, to belong to the class uh, uh, with index 2 that's standing. Uh, and uh, we can do the same thing with um, a y test. Uh, so this is just going to uh, go the same way. We want the uh, index of the column with the highest value of uh, y test. Again, we want to look at this axis. And let's see what this looks like. So we can see the correct uh, class label for the first sample is 2, uh, or again, uh, standing. Uh, the correct labels for the next two samples are also two, and so on. And now we can check how many of these are equal to this. So for each of these we want to see. Uh, the first sample we see is classified wrong, so this is not going to be correct. Uh, <coughs> but the second sample and the third sample, for example, are correct, and these last samples are also uh, classified correctly. So we're just going to 
check our accuracy and then see for y true y predicted in we want to compare so the true labels are in y test class and the um, predicted labels are in y pred class and we want to see if these two are uh, the same let's pull them y true and y predicted um, Then we want to uh, increase the number of uh, correctly classified samples and then in the end we're going to divide this accuracy by the length of, um, of uh, any of these classes that they have the same size uh, to see how uh, to see what percentage of the uh, samples were classified correctly. So we see we get 93.82%, uh, uh, just like we had for the categorical address.